There are um, other mentions of this in the Bible, as I said. Um, keep, your, you know, keep a bookmark in Isaiah 56, because I, I went a little bit out of order for what I was going to do, but that's fine. I think it's more important to get this foundation down first. Isaiah 56, keep a bookmark there. Turn, if you would, to John chapter 12. This is a slightly deeper topic this morning, but it's, it's, it's really not a, a difficult concept to understand, but there's a lot of scriptural evidence for it, and it's important that we get this scriptural evidence because, honestly, this is, a, this is the type of sermon, this is going to offend people. Now, whether or not the people in this room get offended, I don't know, but this is the type of sermon that will offend people, guaranteed. It's going to make people angry. It's going to make people mad. And, what I, and I don't normally give disclaimers for my sermons, but what I ask this morning is that you look at the scriptural evidence. Put away your preconceived ideas. We live in a world, and you know, honestly, the reason why people get angry at the, at the sermon I'm going to preach this morning is because they're brainwashed. Because they've been brainwashed by the media, by the music, by the movies, by the Hollywood, by all of these things that, that, are, that are teaching us to accept sin and they are teaching us to, to be just tolerant of everything and everything's okay and be very permissive with, with, with all types of sin. And we are being programmed to, be, to thinking that way. And honestly, this is why people get really upset at these sermons, because you're being bombarded with this all the time. And if you're not spending very much time in this book, you're going to lose your grasp of how we should view sin and how we should view these subjects if you're just constantly hearing the world's point of view, Satan's point of view, versus God's point of view on what we're teaching about this morning. So keep that in mind. In the word reprobate, see in John chapter 12, and this doctrine is that there are certain people that cannot believe to get saved. Because obviously we believe that salvation is completely by grace through faith, not of works as any man should boast. We believe, you know, as the Bible says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the most simple thing in the world to get saved. You put your faith on Jesus Christ and God gives you eternal life. That is salvation. So people will say, well, wait a minute. If it's that easy, what happens if a person who you say is rejected by God ends up believing on Jesus Christ. What, what happens then? Well, if a person were to believe on Jesus Christ, obviously they get saved. I mean, there's, the Bible is, is, is very clear about that. But look at John chapter 12 and verse number 37. So many miracles before them, referring to Jesus Christ, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Look at verse 39. Therefore, referring to this scripture in Isaiah, therefore they could not believe. Because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. Who hath blinded their eyes? God has. God blinded their eyes. God hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. They could not believe because of this scripture in Isaiah where he says, look, God has hardened their heart. God has made it so that they cannot believe. We have a perfect example of this in the Old Testament with Moses and Pharaoh. If you remember the story of Pharaoh, now, and we're not going to go through all this. I've done this in the past. When you go through the story, just, just read it on your own. You'll see when Pharaoh rejects Moses and he says, you know, who is the God of Israel? Who, you know, he was just kind of of his own will and of his own heart rejecting the Lord and rejecting Moses and not having anything to do with them. But as you get into the story, you know, when Moses and Aaron, they start bringing these plagues and you start wondering, how can this guy continue <laughs> to refuse them as, as the plagues progress and get worse and worse and they have all these frogs coming up and they're dying and the, you know, the waters turn to blood and all these, all these things are happening that's just... I mean, crazy, and they're being, they're being literally plagued by these things, and, and, it's, and it's affecting them, and, and he still refuses to let them go. Well, the reason why is because God, the Bible says that God hardened his heart. 
He hardened his heart so that he, he couldn't even let them go at that point. And this is a perfect example of someone whose heart God had hardened literally in the Bible. And here, Jesus was referring to, or the Bible here in John 12, not Jesus himself, is referring to the Pharisees that Jesus was doing miracles before. And he's performing healings. He even brings Lazarus back from the dead. Yet, there were many of the religious leaders, the Pharisees at that time, they knew, they said, they even admitted it. They, they took their, their counsel together, meeting together, and they're saying, you know, that this man does all these great miracles. You know, we can't deny that. We know that he's doing all these things, but we need to stop him. And that was the wickedness and evil um, thoughts and intents of the people at that time they were out to kill Jesus Christ they were reprobate they were rejected they could not believe him and I believe and this is what you know, the Bible talks about the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost as being the unforgivable sin in reference it, when you read that verse in context it's Jesus Christ what is he doing he's performing healings and in the context that is when the Pharisees said he doth this by the by the prince of the devils Beelzebub he said the things that Jesus Christ was doing was they were saying that's literally the power of Satan that he is of the devil and that's why he's able to perform these things and it says you know and then he goes into the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost when they are referring to the works of Jesus Christ as being satanic I believe that is the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. They were lit, they had the and I don't even know if that's possible to commit that sin specifically today of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost because they had the opportunity to physically be there to see all of the proof and the evidence to make it much easier to believe on Jesus Christ when he's standing there and performing all these miracles yet they still rejected him and they still denied him and not only that they went even further to say that well this is of Satan.